it's really true. You're kidding. There's not a ship in sight. They won't be back for a week. Are you sure? I'm positive. I checked it out. Brisbane is ours. Girls, man. Loads of girls. <laughs> Everywhere. Everywhere. Beautiful, desperate girls. Hungry, pleading girls. You said you were going to the museum with me. Well, next time. I want to see the Bushman exhibit. Tyler, Tyler, a nice-looking boy like you shouldn't hang around with Bushman. It's unsanitary. We're taking you to the Golden Pig. <laughs> Golden Pig. Major, I'll drop this mission report off and meet you for a drink later. All right, kid. I'll see you at the Golden Pig. <laughs> I need. Oh, my. I am? Do you realize what this city would need if we had a phosgene gas attack? Fresh air? Trained personnel. How do you do? I'm Mrs. Fenway Stewart, chairman of Our Lady's Auxiliary Rescue and Disaster Squad. Oh, you, you must be quite a comfort here to Brisbane. Oh, Lieutenant, we need you desperately. We were getting on swimmingly with Mr. Hume until he, he suddenly yelled that he died and, and walked out. What were you doing to him? Just practicing bandaging and mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. I'm, uh, I'm sorry, Mrs. Fenway Stewart, but you see, my mouth is... I mean, my ship. My ship is leaving, and I'm the captain. Oh, dear. I'm sorry, Terry. You can't, uh, can't practice on him, either. Did you say mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation? Oh, that's not the only exercise. Only? Mrs. Fenway Stewart, that could be the greatest need. I mean, if anything ever happened here in Brisbane, by all means, let's practice. What about your ship? Oh, it sailed before without me. If you could talk to Mr. Hume, you might wish it hadn't. <laughs> I'll take my chances. I'm a brittle. <laughs> If you ask me, Mr. Hume was a fool to go off and die so soon. <laughs> All right, girls. Line up for the resuscitation exercises. Right here. You know, you may save me yet. All right, Terry. In goes the good air and out goes the bad air. I'll try to help you all as much as I can. Oh, do be kind. the time go? Well, we'll have to pick it up from here next week, girls, from where we left off. Oh, now, uh, wait, let's get the wait a minute. Off. You know, you, you just can't leave me here at death's door, Miss... I'll settle for second best. Miss Smith, a, a drink has certain medicinal qualities. Sorry, I can't. Oh, but he's been such a brick about it all, Terry. He needs such a nice boy. She's right. I'll even take this along if it'll make you feel any more secure. I'm sorry. Why don't you? I doubt if Jocko's having much fun in North Africa. He only invited you for a drink. A nice hot cup of tea would do you a world of good. <laughs> I doubt if tea's the drink he had in mind. Oh, Teddy, you never have any fun. You seem such a charming boy. Sailors on leave usually are charming. I'll see you next week, dear. All right. Give my love to your mother, dear. Bye. Good night, ladies. And, uh, thanks for everything. Oh, there you are. You're just in time, too. For what? What do you mean, for what? For your specialty, first aid. I'm sorry, I'm fresh out of bandages. Oh, no, wait a minute. You see, bandages won't do, I'm afraid. I suffer from a badly fractured ego. Look at me, Miss Smith. Here I am, stranded in Brisbane on a Friday night without a date. Now, how am I going to look over there at that bar, walking in, alone? The only naval wallflower in town. A pathetic sight. Oh, an object of scorn and ridicule. Well, all right. I suppose one drink would qualify as first aid. 
but more than that would constitute long-term therapy, and I warn you, that's not my speciality. Oh, well, listen. A drowning man doesn't snare at straws. There we go. through to Terry Smith. I can't believe it. Hi, Major. There goes your date. Wouldn't you know it. When she finally decides to step out and her husband, she grabs off my date. Husband? Only one of the bleeding heroes of North Africa. Jocko Smith, VC. And I mean Victoria Cross. Must be quite a guy. I mean, don't get any wrong ideas. He's, well, he's probably a friend of her husband's. Deliciously. I haven't danced that much in years. I hope you believe in a little hair of the dog that bit you, because I got some more of this plan for tomorrow night. I'm sorry. I'm going to be busy. What are you expecting? Another Faustine attack? <laughs> <laughs> no. That's reserved for Friday nights. All right. What patriotic effort have you got planned for Saturday? It comes under the heading of planned activities. I spend every fourth weekend with my mother in Southport. Well, isn't that a coincidence? You know I just happen to have a train ticket for Southport myself. That's more than a coincidence. No train runs to Southport. You get there by bus. Well, <laughs> that's why I got it so cheap, I guess. If I were you, I'd try for a refund. You'd find it awfully dull. I'm used to it, but for you, I'd recommend Brisbane when the fleet's out. Terry, you're talking to a fellow who was lifted from the rubble of a collapsed building with with two fractured legs, a couple of dislocated shoulders, a bent elbow, a torn <laughs> ear, a bent nose. You think you can scare me off with some dullness? <laughs> well, I do. Oh, hi, kid. Hi, Major. Hey, you missed a great party last night. <laughs> and a nice girl for you, too. I was with a nice girl. Yeah, but I mean a nice girl, you know what I mean? <laughs> Thanks anyway, but I never had more fun in my life. Say, you do me a big favor. Kind of hold the fort down for me. I'm going to Southport for the weekend. Oh, with her? Well, no, but, but she'll be there. Oh, it's kind of cozy, huh? Major Terry Smith is a lady. Oh, now look, kid, you don't have to apologize to me. Besides, you know, it's really none of my business. You're right. I don't have to apologize, and it's none of your business. What's more, I don't intend to discuss her with you or anyone, period. Now, will you excuse me?
Marlow. Rip? I thought you were joking. <laughs> I hope that note in your voice is happy surprise and not disappointment. <sighs> I think it is. But Rip, there's something I have to tell you. Good. Come on down and you can tell me over lunch. Lunch? You crazy Yankee, it's 10 o'clock. <laughs> I know, but it's an admirable time to start building an appetite. Rip, seriously, there's a problem. I know, I, I know, Terry. Your feet still hurt. Listen, you're safe. I've driven through <coughs> town, I've scouted all four buildings, and there's not an orchestra. I don't think there's a harmonica to dance. I wasn't going to talk about my feet. Terry, is it something I'd like to hear after driving 50 miles on an empty stomach? <laughs> Probably not. All right. I'll be down in half an hour. Terry, come on now. You're letting me win. Oh, you seem to be doing that in spite of me. Oh, yeah? Well, let me remind you that darts just happens to be your national game. Oh, that's like calling pool the great American sport. <laughs> well, your rotten game has one advantage, and that is it allows me to give you a couple of tips. Now, with the dart firmly secured in our right hand, we... Oh, now, come on. Come on, you're tensing up. Relax. <laughs> <laughs> you see the... The big rule in darts is to relax and enjoy yourself. Now, we pull back, eye on the target, and follow through. Oh! oh I did. Now, you see what a little teamwork will do? <clears throat> Where did you learn that at Yale? What, darts? No, you'll follow through. Oh, well, I thought that was the key to everything. It certainly seems to be your speciality. Oh, now you make me sound very dull. Oh, no, I meant if there's anything but. Well, on that note, I think we're going to have lunch. Come on. <laughs> See, have to be an old... All right, all right. Got to be an old mountain climber for this. <laughs> Do you think I'm crazy, huh? Come on. <laughs> Mademoiselle, voila. The world-famous view from the banquet room. Now, during the day, we call it the gold room. But in the evening, when that sun sets, oh, it's transformed magically into the Stardust Room. And I hope you'll notice that everything is designed and built exclusively for us. It's charming. You think so? It's romantic. Well, that's good. Terry, I'm all ears. I was so important you had to tell me over lunch. you how much I love picnic. That's good. We'll make a habit. I know it's Saturday, but we're not fighting this war on a 40-hour week, Major. Now, where is Lieutenant Riddle? In Southport, sir. On weekend liberty. Well, get in touch with Shore Patrol in Southport. Get him here. Sounds urgent. It is. You leave tomorrow. I'll save the details until Lieutenant gets here. While you're here, you may as well meet the key man in your mission. Will you come in, please? Our man is just back from North Africa. He's probably the best there is in underwater demolition. Major Butcher, this is Lieutenant Jocko Smith. How do you do, sir? Lieutenant? <laughs> Lieutenant Riddle? Yes. Message for you from Fleet Headquarters, sir. Excuse me now. Oh, yes. 
Yes, darling. Yes. Easy. Well, if the skipper don't know she's married, he's the only one in Brisbane because she's made it clear enough to everybody else. Well, if I didn't know she was married, I sure would have tried something. Oh, even when I knew, I was tempted. So what stopped you? She's had no dice. Oh, get out of here. Stopping you? Oh, ho, that's very funny. Well, big time, Nagurski. You know, this would be simple enough if it was one of you guys that just brushed you right in the mouth. But maybe regulations are against doing that to a commission officer. Whoops. I beat it, you guys. I want to talk this over with the Major. Oh, hey, you better play it cozy, Chief. Maybe the Major doesn't even know. Don't you give me credit for no subtlety. Shout off, will you? Uh, Major, I need your advice about something, though. I know a couple of nice guys, see, and there's a dame. And they're all nameless, see. And this dame is married to one of these nice guys. And this guy she's married to don't know about this other nameless guy, and you know that something's gonna fall apart when somebody starts naming names, right? Yeah, well, something's gonna fall apart in about 15 minutes, Chief, because I'm going to talk to one of those nameless guys. Hi, Major. I uh, hope this trip is really necessary. Oh, I'm sorry the war interrupted your weekend, kid. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry too, Major. Well, put it down occupational hazard. You know, I've been pulled off a few jazzy weekends myself. You know, Major, when I was 10, I promised myself I'd, I'd stop inviting big mouths into alleys. Why don't you ease off before I have to break my promise? Oh, really? <laughs> well, it seems to me you've been free to comment on my weekend beachheads. Knock it off, Major. You know, you Ivy League guys are all alike. When you flip, you break all the rules. Major, for the sake of our friendship, I'm asking you for the last time. Now, this isn't a cheap setup. I'm gonna marry this girl. Gentlemen, won't you come in? Lieutenant? Major. Lieutenant Jocko Smith, this is Lieutenant Riddle, captain of the Kiwi. I know you by reputation, Lieutenant. Anybody in Australia would have to be blind, deaf, or dumb not to know about Jocko Smith. It'll be a pleasure serving with you, Lieutenant. My pleasure. Shall we get to work, gentlemen? This is a Japanese battleship, the Omuro. Until the morning of the 15th, she'll be in Kulu Harbor making repairs. You're going to get her. A battleship? Yes, Major. Well, can't you do that with bombers, sir? Not at that range. They've got to carry so much gas to get there, they can't carry bombs heavy enough to pierce her armor. That's where you come in. And what'll the ruddy Japanese be doing when they see a Yank ship sail in? The Kiwi works these waters as a Swiss trading vessel. We'll get you in, Lieutenant. But then what, sir? Well, the British have loaned us some special limpet charges. Where's the fuse? Now, that's what's special. The cap's inside. They're detonated by the concussion of light bombs hitting the water around them. Now, you've got to get Lieutenant Smith close enough to plant these charges on the hull of the Umura before 0400 of the 15th. What happens then? We're sending in an airstrike. The last possible moment we can be sure of getting that battle wagon before she sails. Now, the light bombs hitting the water will set off these charges and hopefully sink the Amura. Is that clear? Yes, sir. And then the flaming shore batteries blast us out of the water. We expect they'll blame the air raid, if we're lucky. The earliest time that you can weigh anchor is noon tomorrow. That means a thousand miles in nine days. Can you do it? We can do it. Good. Lieutenant Smith? I'll expect you at 0800, and we'll go over the details with the British demolition expert. Yes, sir. Obviously, perfect timing is of the essence, so you'll conduct yourselves accordingly. That'll be all, gentlemen. Yes, sir. Say, so, uh, let's have a drink on it. Oh, sorry, chaps. I have a wife that I haven't seen for a very long time. Saved up for me after four years. Uh, I'm sorry. It was such, just such a great big surprise. 
Why didn't you write? Well, I thought a surprise was a flaming great idea. It never occurred to me you'd be in Southport. Jocko. I'm... I want to tell you about Southport. Yeah. First things first. anything about the bouquet I brought you. What? There, on the table. talk to you? You don't have to write me a letter, darling. I'm leaving again tomorrow. Jocko, we... we need time. Please don't let them send you away yet. Send me away? I volunteered. Sweetheart, do you know what that Yank Admiral called me? He called me the best. How do you like that? Jocko Smith, the best in the world at something. style all your own. If I have, I don't like it any more than you do. He's pretty hung up on you. Why'd you tell him? I tried, honestly, I tried. I just didn't know how to. Why didn't you say something simple, like I'm sorry, but I'm married? I couldn't get it out. I guess I just couldn't face losing him. Oh, I understand. There's a war going on, everything is fun and games. No, you don't understand at all, Major. This isn't a game. I didn't go out with a man for four years. Well, you picked a lousy time to fall off the wagon. I wasn't intending to. But all of a sudden, four years of loneliness seemed to catch up on me. Rip was such a nice boy. I didn't think it would hurt to go out and have a drink with him. Just a laugh, a dance. But something happened. I can't tell you the exact moment. I got lost. I fell in love with him. Where does that leave Jocko? I don't know. Did you see what he gave me? Quite a rainbow. <sighs> yes, isn't it? Poor Jocko. He couldn't even hold a job down in peacetime. And then the war came and he found himself. A lot of guys in North Africa aren't complaining. But he's in love with it. And my love can't grow stronger just because he knows how to sink ships or blow up ammunition dumps. He came home after being away four years and volunteered to go away again after only one night. He said, I think Jocko fears peace more than he fears death. And if that's so, when this war's over, he's going to need me desperately. 
You know, it's too bad you're not the tramp I had you pegged for. And to make this a lot simpler. Thank you, Major. I've got to tell them. No. Not the left of the mission. Didn't Jocko tell you what ship he was going on? Ah, oh, it's the Kiwi. Rips the skipper. Hey, Chief. Chief, I thought you said the Major was going to take care of it. Well, the skipper's right up there on the dock right now, waiting to say goodbye to her. Well, that ain't none of your business, Nagurski. None of my business, huh? My neck is leaving on a mission on a ship which is commanded by the guy who may find out at any minute that he doesn't like the guy who can set off the limpet charges the ship is loaded with, and vice versa. And you're telling me it ain't any of my business? Oh, beautiful. Thank you very much. Hiya, Jocko. Hey, is everything all ready, old chap? Oh. Yeah, I guess so. Hey, what's the matter with you? You look like you just lost your best friend. <laughs> friend hardly describes a relationship. <laughs> well, I guess you just couldn't make it. Welcome aboard the Kiwi, Lieutenant. Thank you. Take it back to the water pool. Dude, I, I was a little out of line. Don't forget it, Major. We all make mistakes. Coming aboard? Yeah, yeah, in a minute. chaps take Cairo. There's a Liberty Town. I have no complaints about Brisbane, Jacko. Yeah, I'd rather hear about Cairo, though. I thought you'd been there, Major. Well, I have, but in the quiet days. Nothing like he probably saw. Oh, saw, heard, tasted. You chaps haven't had the half of it. I mean, I had experiences there that you don't exactly go home and share with your wife, you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, look, uh, why don't you tell us about Tobruk? I understand you went in on the first day. No, oh, I was in luck. First day, first man. I was waiting in the ruddy town square when the army came in. Anyway, the next guy that says ain't love grand gets a mouthful of knuckles. Don't look at me, Chief. I've given up names for the duration. For the duration? Of this trip. <laughs> what are you guys yapping about? Shh. Things could be worse. Yeah, like stepping on a landmine. I don't know. Hollis is right. No matter how bad things get, they can always be worse. I remember one time in San Diego, there was this guy, he'd come home and he found this girl serving a midnight snack to a stevedore. Well, he made a mess out of this stevedore. He put his girl in the hospital for six months and he got himself a year in the clink. What could be worse than that? Could have come home the night before and found me. <laughs> well, uh, tell us about it. Well, Major. Could I see you for a minute? Yeah, um, well, tell him about it. <laughs> yeah. Well, the Aitais are in a fair panic. I mean, they'd lost their evacuation ships the day before. Yeah. So, you know, them two nameless guys I was talking about, well, the crew is getting pretty jumpy, so what do you think might happen if they found out about each other? Well, one of the nameless guys is just wild enough to kill the other and maybe blow up the ship doing it. The other nameless guy is liable to have so much guilt he could accidentally goof the whole mission. Well, sir, I don't think that's going to reassure the crew. Well, I, uh, uh, that... Well, sir... Bow. 
only got four hours, Major. Talk us in fast. All right, keep heave to. All right, sir. Stand by to heave to. いい船だね。まあだいたい九人ぐらいでしょう。あおたくらは英国の方ですか？行ってるんだ。書類は揃ってる。入国してよいが、ヤムロから相当離れて怒りを落とせ。ありがとう。さあ行こう。He said we could enter the harbor, but we can't enter near the Yamura, and no one is allowed ashore. That's a close one. Okay, let's get underway. Chief, take the helm. Rivers is for him. Magazines are here, about a third back from the bow. Good. You know, we'll place a, a couple of limpets under there, and a couple of more under the main fuel tank. That ought to drop that ruddy ship right into their imperial ancestors' laps. Here's the geography, Lieutenant. We're here. The Yamuro's berthed right here. Now the distance is about 1,500 yards, Lieutenant. This is a torpedo net. Well, that makes it a bit sticky. No problem. Well, it's usually wired to an alarm system, and mine with small charges to explode the torpedoes. I've got through them before. Now, if you'll get my gear put up on deck, I'll change in my work clothes. Right. Chief, chief, bring those limpet charges topside. Two o'clock. Bombers will be here in two hours, Major. Check. The air pressure in his tanks checks out, sir. It'll give him two hours. If he isn't out of the water by then, he won't be breathing anyway. Jocko, all your gear's ready. Ah. Uh, oh, by the way, Rip, old boy, I left my personal effects on your desk. Strictly a formality. I'll be back. Shall we?
husband who was supposed to be the last to know. Yeah. But it was a dead heat up until a couple of minutes ago. You knew? Everybody in Brisbane knew. Except you two. Well, did anybody figure I might want to know? Everybody was worried about it, kid, but... Well, nobody wanted to hurt you. She is his wife, you know. Come in, Chief. Miss Palmer will be here in 30 minutes. Lieutenant Smith ought to be back by now. Something must be wrong. Better check out the air in his spare tank. All right, now, wait a minute. This is no time for personal heroics. Major, aside from my personal feelings, we have a mission to complete. Any argument about that? Only one. If anybody goes, it'll be me. Because I'm not involved. Well, that's why it has to be me. Major, this mission's got to work. I can't win by default. Miller, let's get that tank up on deck. Yes, sir. Sir? You told him? No, Jocko did. Ten minutes and the bombers will be here, sir. Thanks, Digger. Now get on back to the ship. There's no time for that. Give me a couple of those bombs. Man, on your ready life, this is my job. This is Jack. There's no time to argue. Right you are, Cabo. Now that cuts off any more discussion, doesn't it? See you back at the ship.
I always knew he wasn't afraid to die. Is that being brave, Rip? I don't know. I can't question what motivated him. He saved my life, Terry. He prevented me from going along in that thing. Did he know about us? No. I can't help thinking I'm to blame. That's crazy. Is it? If I told the truth, they might have sent somebody else. No matter what happens, Terry, we're still the same people and we love each other. No, Rip. It won't work anymore. It all started off wrong on a lie. If Jocko had lived, I know we could have cleaned it up and worked it out, but not now. Darling, please, give it a chance. We'd never find a draw deep enough to bury this. Goodbye, Rip. at midnight Eastern. Get the last laugh with Burns and Allen, Jack Benny, the best of Groucho, and Laurel and Hardy. And Saturday at 8 Eastern, Robert Blake and Jeff Corey star in Helltown, the CBN Movie of the Week. <laughs>